Hey there, welcome back to this series on writing CAD software from scratch. In the last video, we came up with a routine that could convert any generic polygonal mesh into an STL file that you could you know, 3D print or send off for fabrication or whatever. Basically, that sets the groundwork for everything else we're gonna do in this series. So let me explain exactly what that means. So I can get this roadmap here. Whatever you do in CAD pretty much has to go through um, this polygonal mesh uh, state. You, you know, whether you're working in SolidWorks or FreeCAD, behind the scenes, it's making a polygonal mesh. Whenever you want to render something, polygonal mesh. Whenever you make an STL file, like we did before, polygonal mesh. You want to figure out the geometry properties or mask properties, you want to find the CG. I think probably it's using a polygonal mesh to do so. You want some other output file, you want IGIS, you want whatever else, polygonal mesh. You want to do some FEA, you want to do some CFD, again, polygonal mesh. It's like the, the cornerstone for everything that you want to do in CAD, and that's why it's going to be the focus of our, um, of our series, pretty much. So as I said before, we did this STL file last time, we made a routine that does that. Not very pretty. Um, if you look, we actually used a... Uh, an ASCII SDL, which basically you have to write down solid name and then face normal, I mean, all this stuff in words. Not very efficient. Um, it's not too bad, really, but it doesn't scale very well. There's a better way to encode it, and that's a binary STL, and that's what we will do in, in this video. So, a binary STL basically starts off with a, a header, that's 80 bytes. That apparently you can ignore it, you can leave it all zeros which is awesome. Then you have to put a four byte value of how many triangles there are in your mesh. So I guess for us, I think there, were, there was 14 triangles in this mesh, if I recall. Um, then for each triangle, you have to give, again, the normal vector, 12 bytes, three vertices, each just 12 bytes. And then um, this thing called the attribute byte count. I'm not sure what that's for really. Um, it just brings up the total number of bytes to 50. And I think you can leave it at zero. Yeah, it should be zero. So, pretty simple to encode. Um, we're not going to have to do too much. One key difference from last time, though, is that everything has to be a sort of like a four-byte value. So you see, there's there's three components for these, these uh, values here, and they're all twelve bytes each. That means everything has to be four byte. I, if I recall, I think we used doubles in our um, in our code before. Yeah, everything here is a double. So. Let's just go over this again just to refresh. We had a, an array here for the nodes. This is basically the, the coordinates in 3D space of every point on that shape we just showed. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. These are the coordinates in 3D, 3D space for every vertex. Then we have this int triangles array that shows every element. So the first element has vertices 0, 1, and 5. The second triangle has vertices 0, 5, and 4, and so on. And we basically had a routine here that just writes an STL file. So we'll do another one, but instead of being an, an ASCII, it will be a, a binary STL. That's not too hard. And we'll comment uh, the other one out. And you know what? Just to be, be consistent, I'll change everything else to be float. I don't want to have weird stuff flying around. There's no reason to use a double anyway. We're not like that precise. It's just a stupid test anyway. So. Let's make everything here float. Everything here float. Who cares if we need to or not? Okay. And then I think this. Okay, good enough. Um, now, we'll just redo the same routine again, but for a binary um, SDL. So. Well, this won't be too hard, I don't think. We'll see. Maybe I'll mess it up. So, again, like we said before, the first thing you have to do is write a header and then number of triangles. So if you if you want to write something in a, in a binary, it's not f printf, it's just f write. And then what you what you do is you hold on, you basically you pass in a, a value here, or, or I guess an, an address of a value, followed by the um, 
sort of number of bytes per element in that value and the number of values in that uh, array or whatever it would be. And then you put location of where you're writing. So to do that, we have to define some, some variables up front. So we'll make a header array. So here, an 80 byte header array. So it's very simple. We'll say care header size 80 equals zero, all zeros. Um, and then the next thing here is number of triangles. Believe it or not, we actually have a value for that int num triangle, so we can just use the one from before. But we will need another value. Um, this attribute byte count is not going to change for every triangle. So we'll just define that up front. We'll say care attribute byte count size 2 equals 0. Yep, that should be good. And now to write something, we'll say uh, fwrite header. So that, that's the, the address of the first element in this header array. Then, like I said, there is one byte per element and 80 elements. So just like that, we'll have our header written. Next thing is to write the number of triangles. So we'll pass in the address of number of triangles. That is a four byte value, just one into f. Just like that, we finish the first uh, 84 bytes of our binary STL. So not too hard. Now we can get into the you know, meat of the actual function. Not too different from before. So just like before, we have to calculate the normal vector, like in the Wikipedia page. So use the same code as before, float normal, get normal. But instead of writing the values with f printf, we'll write them with f right. And actually, it's much easier to output this because all you have to do is say f right normal because there's a there's a whole array by itself called normal, and it's an array of floats. So everything is going to be uh, four bytes. There's three of them, and then we're writing it to f. So not not too hard at all. So at this point, we've write it, we've written the header number of triangles, we're in the normal vector for every triangle, and we have to talk about the vertices. So we'll, as before, we'll loop over three vertices, and instead of um, writing them like this, with f print f, we'll write them with f right. I think we'll write, uh, as it says here, nodes, triangles, ij. Again, there's uh, four bytes per value, three values per element, and now we're going to get to F. So we'll kill this. And now, last thing to do is write this attribute byte count. So instead of F print F, we'll just do F right attribute byte count one two. Oops, F. Honestly, that should just work out of the box. Let's let's give it a go, I guess. So we have an STL. Let's see what it looks like. Nice, nice. I know what this means. Awesome. Now let's open it in this uh, this tool. Let's just refresh. And again, we have our STL. There it is, just as before. So it works. And, uh, and now, um, our STL is 784 bytes, which by the way, makes sense, right? I said there was 14 triangles. For each triangle, there's 50 bytes. That's 700 plus 84. So we have exactly the number of bytes we expect. Now, if we look um, back, to the previous one. Yeah, so in the last video we had a 2.4K file size. Now it's only 780. So you can see this is a much more efficient way to store data. Obviously for this particular model, it's nothing special. I mean, it's not huge. Once you go to a very large model, this difference will start to add up quite a bit. So actually, um, that's all I wanted to do in this video. I have another um, 
video to output no, to, to, to uh, upload today about rendering so I'll get on that that's it for this video we've done a binary STL I can kind of double check off this line and uh, yeah see you next time